I'll go to the reports of um, department heads. Start with the first report, Mr. Uh, Anthony Finch. Thank you, Mayor, Board, Madam Clerk. Um, the, before I start my report, I want to address the residents, the board, and the mayor, as well as the clerk. It was brought to my attention um, a couple weeks ago that I used a profanity, and for that I do apologize, because I know better and I should have done better. However, I don't apologize for the content of my message. Um, at that moment, I was upset, and I've said it numerous times, that um, I feel like, if not myself, at least the finance department and the front desk is constantly being attacked and asked questions. It's been brought that these are quote unquote tough questions. Yesterday we honored fallen veterans in the military. I'm a veteran and I feel like I can handle tough questions. The questions that have been asked of me are not tough questions. Most of the questions are really irrelevant to getting the job done. I left a package on the front for some of the residents to look at. Some of the residents just asked a few questions, comments to the mayor a few minutes ago. I'm gonna address some of those things. This is about my native day being in South Village. I've seen things on Facebook, Facebook. I've seen things in the newspaper, and I will say most of them are lies. I try to sit up here and be very professional and not get caught up in this political uh, game. After tonight, I will not continue to allow myself to be a pawn. I am Mayor, Board, Madam Clerk, is gonna make a decision with respect to accounts payable. I will no longer answer any invoices at open session related to accounts payable. If you have a question about an invoice, you will have to ask that department head who signed off on it. Because if I give you 10 days to ask me about an invoice, I'm not going to let you ask me at 7 o'clock to grandstand or do whatever you want to call it when you had an opportune time to answer those, ask me about those invoices. Because if you can email me at 10 30 at night on a day I do not work here, and when you can email me at 8 o'clock in the morning, or you can leave me a message on my phone, surely in 10 days you can ask me a question about accounts payable. So after tonight, I would not ask and me answer any of those questions. All right. and, and those that feel it's wrong, I'm sorry. I will not play this political game. It's a game of chess, and I'm not choosing, I'm choosing not to be the pawn anymore. Now, let me explain some of the things that I've heard and why I've gotten upset. My third day here, I would ask about <clears throat> shut off, 200 homes, 800 estimated readings. Not in one village that I know of, and please verify you think I'm lying. Does the finance director cut off water or read water meter readings? We do collect money. But that question in the last 90 days have never been asked of the public works director, nor has that question been re uh, rectified by the previous finance director who was here, from what I'm told, eight years. So in my third day here, how do you expect me to fix a problem? But like I said numerous times, I tackle problems head on, as was mentioned tonight. So I met with the person three times. The third meeting, yes, it got heated. This is one of the lies I was placed out there. In that conversation, it was told that I assaulted this person. I guarantee you tonight, Chief White does not have a police report that said I assaulted that individual. However, that person did put his finger in my face twice, and I let that person know I am not an interim finance director. I am a man. You don't have to like me. You don't have to respect me. But what you would not, no matter who you are, from the janitor to the president, you would not ever disrespect me. So yes, did I get heated? Yes, I did. But not one trustee asked me to verify what really happened. The rumor just kept floating that I assaulted an individual. So then, because Mr. Finch made all these changes, people didn't like the changes I was making, we had another meeting. 
In that meeting, it was said, go back to the old way. Well, fine. I don't know everything, as I stated before. We went back to the old way. The gentleman just spoke about the water bill. Trustees in your packet, I gave y'all a lot of information. Since I've been here, I found, as you guys already know, a resident who's been dead for five years, still getting the water bill. In your packet, you will see a lady who's in a wheelchair, got a $3,200 water bill. You will see in your packet, in 2018, on the news, a gentleman had a 5,000 water bill mistake. So when you ask me about things, my question that I ask back to you is, what was the people doing before me, and why was the problem ever fixed? Because if you want me to fix it, and I go about my business to fix it, don't make me the problem anymore. Because like I said before, with two things I know at age 50, people don't like to change, and people don't like to be accountable. The other thing that set me on fire that night, <laughs> Trustee Brewer asked a question. Whether or not it's illegal for me to be an interim finance director and a trustee, I mean a treasurer. Good question, very good question. But the question I asked her, and to this day I've got an answer. Why did, why did the attorney ask about me doing something illegal? And what is it exactly that I'm doing illegal? If the attorney feels like I'm not doing my job, then he should tell the mayor and get me fired. I have no problem with that. If I'm not doing the job, let me go. If the attorney feels like that me being interim financial director is questionable, then put me in another task. But don't come in public session the first time you bring this to my attention, because I felt like that was a kind of embarrassment moment. But then that same attorney for your tax dollars didn't say nothing about the previous financial director signing for checks. Didn't say nothing about what the auditors wrote in the report. So again, all of a sudden, Mr. Finch has these questions. <coughs> the question was asked about, do I have a surety bond? Very good question. And yes, I have a surety bond. And no, I'm not giving it to the trustees because when I was trying to be transparent, they put my business on Facebook. Say it again. It was no big deal, so no. If you want to see it, I will show it to you, but I'm not giving you a copy. But the question that I asked, that same attorney, because let me explain what a surety bond is. A surety bond says, in the event that I steal, somebody will pay the village back the money that I stole. As you guys know, your former treasurer stole. So if the attorney was so concerned about somebody stealing, why didn't he act upon it the moment the previous uh, treasurer went to jail. Because if my house get broken to on Monday, you best believe too is I got along with my house. But once again, Mr. Finch, he's doing something wrong. But I can guarantee you, not one treasurer, not a clerk, not the mayor, can tell me that the former treasurers, any of them, had a surety bond, nor the two people that signed checks to this day have a surety bond. But yet, I potentially can steal something. That's what I want to mention. Now, brought to my attention, go find how many fire hydrant in Salt Village. Again, no finance director does that. You pay a director and you pay Robinson Engineer for that. But I got the answer, and thank you, Robinson Engineer, for giving me that answer. But the question that I had, for the last administration that you can see in back of me, those are fire hydrants that's been broken years before I got here. Those same trustees that asked me that question, why didn't you budget to get into those fire hydrant fix? Amen. And to this day, why are they not getting fixed? But more importantly, why is that question never asked of the people that can fix the fire hydrant, not the finance director? Because my job is to collect money. <laughs> but I asked that question. And still, and still, I get no answer. People ask, they said last week, they supposed to know what the money's doing, where it's coming in, where it's going out. Let me ask you guys this. Who worked yesterday on a holiday? Because let me tell you something. If you worked two hours in Salt Village yesterday, you know what you get paid for? Any answer? 12. And guess what? Because I read. It's not in the contract. So you want to know where your money's going? It's going into unnecessary overtime. I applaud Chief White for getting in and doing what he's doing. And the reason I applaud him, from May to November, Police department spent over thirty, three hundred thousand dollars in overtime. And before somebody say, well, that's because the mayor won't hire nobody. Well, no, nah, that's not really the truth. That's a little bit. But the real truth is, if you work nine to five, 
How many of you guys can punch in at 8.30, punch out at 5.30, and your boss pay you two and a half hours extra overtime? That's what really goes on. So with these questions that you're asking me don't really have nothing to do with the finance of the, biz, of the village. There's a lot of internal function that's broken. But people won't admit that maybe all good intentions, that the people here and before me might good, be good individuals, but maybe they're not as competent as led on to believe. I was called on Facebook incompetent. Well, maybe I am, but I can tell you something. I know my job, and I know it without a shadow of a doubt. The other thing I want to talk about, lady just spoke of, why we need a, <clears throat> why we need a line of credit. Well, you got to, last year you got to form a line of a, a TAR, tax anticipated warrant, like the mayor said, it cost you $20,000. You need it to operate the village. But this particular season, you're going to need it because, as you guys heard last week, you're about to spend $110,000, $115,000 for a village administrator. Don't believe me? Call Glenwood. Ask them what they pay their village administrator. The current attorneys, just for their current function, they charge us $190,000 a year. So you get a village attorney, minimum $150,000. You fix the fire hydrants, that's $160,000 just to buy the equipment. That's not including overtime or anything that goes along with that. So the reserve, gonna be, half of it will be gone after day one of the new budget. In your packet, trustees, residents, you hear every week, Mr. Fence said this village $2 million in a hole. Yep, I did. Yep, the village is $2 million in a hole. But let me explain something to you. As I said numerous times, giving you this piece of paper is just information. If you don't understand the knowledge of this information, it's just numbers. But let me explain to you how it works. Again, I run business in, in Salt Village like it was my personal household. If you look on your sheet, trustees, Basically, I'm going to explain to you briefly how general fund works. The state sends you X amount of dollars. It really does not fluctuate. As you all know, the villages, municipalities do not create anything. So if the municipality, I mean the state and county send you $1,000, let's say, and then you have miscellaneous bills like health insurance, not health insurance, fax machines, copiers, supplies, whatnot, whatnot. And let's say for all intents and purposes, that's $800. Then you have, in your case, your house, your mortgage. That's roughly $1,200. So at the end, you break even. Most of us can say we know people that live paycheck to paycheck. So the village is breaking even. But then most of us go out and we work overtime. That's your extra money. The way the village gets extra money, they provide a service, i.e. like you do when you work overtime. That service, in this case, is called your water. So when the money comes in, that's the additional money that's not coming from the state or from the county. But what happens, as in your personal household, when you marry, you get a child, and you say, I want to move from an apartment to a house, to a bigger house. You get a little raise, inflation goes up. But what you didn't realize when you got that house, there's a thing called taxes. So when that comes in, you got to dip it to the money that you had from your overtime. So bring that back to the village. When the water bill, when the general fund money comes in and you pay your regular bills, when you go out and hire more policemen, more firemen, your insurance goes up because you got claims, that money got to still be paid. It's a permanent payment. As the mayor said earlier, you have to pay payroll. So if you got to pay payroll and you only got X amount of dollars from the county, from the state, where do you get it from? You get it from your water fund. I'm going to say this, and I know half the people I disagree with it. It is not illegal to use money out of a water fund. What is illegal with respect to the water fund is if you have a bond attached to that water fund and you do not pay that bond first and then use that money, that's illegal. That's how that works. More detail if you just learn government fund accounting. The, the other thing that was in the newspaper was the village is $19 million in the hole. Trustee Brewer is right. How many of you guys got a mortgage? If you got a mortgage, guess what? You're in a deficit. 
If you make $100,000 and your mortgage is $200,000, I can't say you got two years of salary to pay off your mortgage. That's not realistic. What happened is your mortgage is spread out over generally 30 years, which is the same thing with the debt that the village has. So to say the village is, is in debt is a true statement, but it's not a clarifying statement as to why. So that's what bothers me. You are getting, the residents are getting half truth, shady conversation, shady questions, but no one is fulfilling the whole picture. The $250,000 that the mayor mentioned last week, people are upset because they're just not finding out about it. Maybe the, the conversation that happened last week and now is a reason he didn't put it in public conversation. It's something that should be handled in an executive session. But, you, but to ask yourself, do you pay $250,000 or do you pay $4 million? Because if you default, as the mayor said earlier, you don't have a bond rating. Default on a bond, you really won't get anything. You've been junk status. And then you'd be upset that your rates and everything is higher. So, 250 or 4 million. But then my question is, because everybody above board, why did not the finance director provide that information to the trustees? Trustee Brewer mentioned last week, secretly she found out about the water bill two million dollars in a hole so surely if he secretly give her information he would have secretly have told her what transpired that's what i'm talking about the truth is not being said and let me tell you something else the fact that you guys ask for transparency you should but you are not going to get 100 percent transparency from no board don't think you voted in, and it's no disrespect to none of the trustees. There's private information that you should not know. There's employee information that you should not know. I'll give you two perfect examples right now. Did you know that when the mayor tried to hire part-time workers, a complaint was filed against him by a department head? Did you know that a department, no, I'm sorry, not department head, department, did you know that when another department of Salt Village tried to assist another department to get work done, that department filed a complaint? Every time there is a complaint, guess who get paid? Your attorneys. That information don't get leaked to the public. That's why I get upset, because when I try to be transparent, I sent it to seven people. Now, if I listen to what you guys say as residents, and, I, and, you, and it's true that the mayor got a bunch of bobbleheads follow him. I can process elimination, get that down to two people. But nobody leaked to the resident when a lady who got $12 water bill got cut off, but a person who had a $1,200 water bill got, cut up, I mean, got left on. So when I look at the water bills, the consistent pattern that I see, the investors are the ones got the high water bills. So when I put policies and procedures in place, it seemed like all heck break loose. Mr. Fitch doing something wrong. Okay, the question I want to know, if anybody can answer, prior to me, why wasn't these problems fixed? If you are saying the previous finance director was a superstar, and maybe he was, what policy and procedure can I follow from him to continue what he did? What policy and procedure can the front desk staff take? Now, speaking of front desk staff, we went back to the quote-unquote old way. You guys heard all the complaints about the front desk staff. Mary would call me every day. You guys, I, they said they didn't do this, they didn't do that. Well, the week of Easter, the young lady came in the front desk on a Friday. She was upset because her water, she couldn't move into her house and get ready for Easter dinner because she couldn't get occupancy or compliance. I asked the guy, the, my team, what's going on? They said, well, we put it in the books, we made the appointment. Well, did the water get cut off? They said, yes. I read the form. The form says, shut off. The form was signed by the public work worker. So if he signed it and he said he shut the water off, why did he do it? You know what I was told? He didn't understand the form. Mm. So now, the front desk staff who get ridiculed, ridiculed every day, who been, who's fairly new, supposed to know the process, but yet the staff that been here for years can't read a form, that's the old way. These are the games that I'm no longer gonna play. Either let me do my job, or I'm not gonna do the job. 
because I'm here not to make friends. I'm here because Mary Burgess checked my references with other people, checked my resume, and know that I'm able to do a job. But these games we play, it's not necessary. So all I have to say is you got to start asking legitimate questions and get answers that you can understand. I've said numerous times, the information was given to the trustees was incomplete. It's one thing to ask me about um, water, but then if you don't tell me what you're looking at, it doesn't make sense. It was put in the paper that a treasury report haven't been provided to the trustees since last year. I mean, last May, something like that. That's not true. It's in your packet, you see the minute. I gave a treasury report in November, and I clearly said then, I am not taking uh, information out of a system and provide, doctor it up and provide it to you. But what was said in the paper, we ain't got one in over a year. Now let's think about this. If you have a bank account and the bank sends you a bank statement, why would you give it to somebody else and say put it in a new format so they can manipulate the number? Especially when you keep asking me these questions implying that I might be doing something illegal. So then when I say I'm not going to take the bank statement that comes from a third party source and format it to the old way, you get upset. Doesn't make sense, people. So all I'm saying, Mayor, Board, the residents, if we're here to do the business of Salt Village, let's do the business of Salt Village. Let's leave the personal tax, let's leave the political tax, which I know this is a political thing, let's leave the racial tax done and ask questions that's going to move the village forward. One of the concerns that I have, as Mayor said about Joe and Dr. Strata, people say Joe doesn't have a high school education. Okay. Dr. Strata, how can she help with the finance department? What's her qualification? Well, I'm going to make an assumption. If you got a PhD, that leads me to believe at least you can think and process information. Like I said earlier, I have a master's, but I was told I'm incompetent. So you got to ask yourself, what level of education do you really want? Because Facebook, he ain't finished college, and I'm pretty sure he's richer than anybody in this room. But the question should be asked, are they doing the task that the mayor assigned them to? And if you say no, that's a different question. But if it related to their degrees, what does that have to do with can they do the job? I know a lot of people that don't have degrees, but they function. Can we talk about that? So I'm going to conclude with that. But like I said, I'm making a decision that I know is not going to be light, that's not going to be comfortable, but it is what it is because I'm not playing these political games anymore. And with that, Mayor, Board, again, residents, I apologize for using profanity, but I got upset. But when you accuse me of being doing something illegal from an attorney who has been with the village for years, but not one time, said any questionable things about stuff that has happened in the package about illegal activity, like taking money out of ATM. I wonder. That's the clue of my report, and thank you. Yeah! Uh, fire department.